If you had the opportunity to buy a Nissan GTR and take an epic friend on an epic journey driving some of the most beautiful roads in the world, would you do it? What if I told you that you and this other person could go on the trip, all expenses paid, the catch is you have no guarantee that things will work out, or that you'll even make it across the country, or that the car will even be there when you show up to get it. So, would you do it? Whenever I have a big decision to make, I use four questions. Will I grow? Will I have relationships? Will I have an adventure? And will I see beauty? Buying an exotic Japanese supercar and driving it from a remote part of the world across the country, seeing some of the most beautiful driving roads in the world while spending it with my brother? Yeah, that's a check of all four boxes. Hello my fellow primates, welcome to another video. My name is Brandon and today we are going to try and answer the question, can you buy a car, drive it, enjoy it, and then sell it online for a profit? I think it's worth a try. So to give you a little context about the car, it is a 1989 Nissan GTR, one of the legendary cars that come out of Japan in the 1990s golden era of building. They are exotic in North America because they were never for sale here. In Canada, you had to wait 12 years before you could import it, and in the US, 25 years. What? This led to a really unique circumstance where the prices doubled within a two-year window, being the car enthusiast that I am, I thought maybe it's time to put my money where my mouth is, buy one of these things in a remote location where the prices haven't quite jumped yet and try and sell it somewhere else. They call it arbitrage. The only problem being is I don't have enough money to buy a GTR on my own and I'm going to need to convince my brother to come along with me because I'm going to need a driver and I'm going to need some extra cash. Let's see a horrible reenactment of that. I think I found a good one. It's blue, super clean, and it's been really well taken care of. They're asking 22K. I think we could make some good money on this one. So what's the catch? What are you talking about? I'm always good at finding cars. Hmm. Well, it's in Canada, and it's in Grand Prairie, which I know is 3,000 miles away, but it's February and no one's gonna be buying sports cars, so we could get an epic deal. Well, how are we gonna get it back? It's not like the shipping people really wanna bring it across the border, right? I think we should go there ourselves and pick it up. Let me look it up first. Let's see how, let's see how cold it is. So it's looking like it's negative 20. Uh, it's gonna be blizzard and snow. You said the car was 27 years old and you wanna drive it 3,000 miles across the country in the winter. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. I don't know what could go wrong. <laughs> Why do I feel like I don't have a choice? Well, I already bought the tickets. We're in the airport. That's yeah. right, secret mission. It's not really a secret, because you saw probably the thumbnail. We're buying a GTR! Ah! Wait, this, we're buying a GTR? Double product placement shot. Yum. <laughs> we just flew 2,000 miles? A distance, we came a distance yes. on a mission. I'm wearing blue. We got blue Sparkos. We got racing boots on in blue. If you, if you know what's happening. No, nobody? What we have here is a clean, stock, pristine, R32! Ah! Look at this beauty. Ah. So Dave, yeah. um, as the Grand Puma of GTRs and the most knowledgeable yeah. person that I have ever come across, what are things to look for when buying a GTR? Stickers. Look for them. Look for them everywhere. I know this one says that this timing belt was serviced at 84,146 kilometers. You can do a, uh, like a Japanese car fax. It will actually show uh, dates of registration in Japan. I'm looking at the odometer. The odometer says 100,000. You can see their service stickers, kind of a generation of the car being looked after. It really kind of starts to tell a story. It displays like it should be a legit mileage car. A little blue tag. The little white uh, fasteners are very prone to breaking when you pull them off. The chassis number stamped here. 
right? The chassis number is also in there. Um, the next thing on there is color that is that is the gray. Right away, you can tell if the car has been resprayed. Like in this case, it's blue. You look at the sticker here. You can see, I mean, the whole car is sprayed blue under hood. They actually went through the trouble of masking this off the factory stickers. Like the factory decal there is masked off. You can just barely feel a, feel a paint edge. But I mean, they did a heck of a lot of care and attention to a color change on the car. To me, tells me another part of the story. It's not something that was wrecked and they just slapped together to try to sell at auction. But you start looking at glass. Is it a Nissan windshield? Okay, I have my own theory on this. But what you'll see is you'll see uh, rust forming in these bottom corners. Windshields get replaced. Another spot. This, in order to change the fuel pump, which everybody does when, as soon as they start doing mods, and you cannot get this off without ripping it. You can put your hand all the way down. As long as you don't go through and it's like, holy man, I can feel a whole panel and you're running your hand as far as you can up and you can feel, it's like, wait a minute, I think this might be two cars yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> into one. Um, and things like this car still has the fact, the OEM uh, toolkit and the flare and the jack and the spare tire, you know, it was a, it was a well-maintained car. We're buying a car, we're gonna go snowboarding, we're gonna cannonball it back to Michigan slash Ontario and import it yeah. into the US and put it up for sale for the fans. Correct. We should put the GTR in the background <laughs> while we're talking <laughs> instead of this Ford F-150. This is the cleanest GTR that I've ever come across. It's just incredible. And pay the man. Did you bring, <laughs> did you bring money? Well, I thought just for gas and food, right? Is what you're talking about. Oh, right I now. was supposed to bring the money? Damn. <laughs> Quick, hit that subscribe button. First start, here we go. I don't know what these start like at below minus 20 outside. I think you guys might be the first ever like road trip. The roads are so bad that these guys are going on. Oil and gas industry south of Grand Prairie, they wouldn't let guys go home last night from the job sites. <laughs> so they're embarking on an epic adventure to go to Jasper in uh, their new GTR. Hopefully they make it to uh, make a video. Look how much snow is on that picnic table. That's real snow. Four wheel drive. Snow tires. Legendary. Legendary. Godzilla never had no problems with snow. Yeah. So, uh, where are we? We are in our hostel for the night. We got ourselves a private room. Which is uh, a door and a mirror. And yeah. a light switch. Yeah. Oh. It's got yeah. all the things you need. I'm pretty excited about the bed. Because I've been up since 4 a.m. our time. 21 hours, 3,000 kilometers, $22,000. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little bit more One than that now. One <laughs> legendary GTS. <laughs> yeah. One piece of historic racing. <laughs> yeah. Had a good day. Had a good day. Kyle is flying the drone. Um.
We're going to uh, get some breakfast after doing some filming in the car. It's really different being on the other side of the car. And then as the passenger, you know, it's just insane. It's like, you should have a wheel, you have no control of the car, you're like really close to traffic and you have to worry about your like, your the, the buddy driving the car drifting into traffic, yeah. right? As the passenger, regularly in a left-hand drive car, you're far away, you're like the farthest away from traffic. But here, you're like right there. So when like a big truck comes through, you're like, like ah! I just held it around the corner and I could I, I, was, I could feather the throttle and it was very easy to control around the corner, sliding and keep my angle. It's not like I was super far out or anything, but I could yeah. feel it, it was sliding, and I was able to consistently keep it just by feathering the throttle. And I, I mean, I, I have zero experience with this car, so I mean, that talks to as far as how, how easy it is. I mean, I've driven other cars, like my GTO is not like that at all as far as it, Crossfire, some of those cars just spin around like a dime. You can't control it. This yeah. is very, very controllable. Snowboarding time! Wait, wait, wait. We're in a Japanese car. Snowboarding time! <laughs> <laughs> eh, trees! Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> uh. Now I gotta get out. Oh. Okay. 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 Holy shit. It's deep, man. Okay, so this is where BJ lies. This is where BJ came from. I'm just giving them the other perspective. This is where I came from. I like how you just rode down with no problems. So eh. I had this huge crash. And now eh. I'm just here meditating. <laughs> yeah. Do your breathing exercises. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. Folk. <laughs> if you're not meditating on the side of the mountain, then you're missing out on a lot of things in life. <laughs> so I just came from that hill. <laughs> and that was good. It's so pretty, man. Like, it's insane. Just take a photo. Yeah, you gotta see the view. We're driving from Jasper to Banff through the Canadian Rockies. This is kind of a bucket list item for me, but I always wanted to drive it in a special car at some point. We're in a GTR. It's a beautiful driving, handling car. It's just breathtaking. The mountains are so beautiful that they don't look random. They look like art, like someone put them here, or like the artist who made them took attention to detail to make sure that they, they were that good. It's awe-inspiring. It just, it leaves you feeling that there's more to life, <laughs> maybe is, is the way to put it. I'm so thankful. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys because one of the things that I like truly believe in is exploring and adventure and being able to see different parts of the world and 
there's beautiful parts of the world everywhere. You don't have to like fly to Canada <laughs> or across the country. Um, you can find beauty in anything. But taking the time to like have that adventure and curiosity to see what's out there and experience it and to appreciate it is really what life is all about. And that's that's what cars do. They enable you to do that. They they like hey, you can get more than five kilometers from your house now because you don't have to walk, you can take a car. And cars themselves are just an extension of, of the beauty that, that can be in the world. So anyway, I just wanted to heart to heart, get real. I'm good. Twelve twenty-two. Fill up and driver change. At seven thirty a.m. Been driving all night. In now we're in Glasgow, Montana. The car has been officially imported into the U.S., so it is now a U.S. car. Um, I'm gonna be driving. Kyle did a lot of the driving last night. The car's got so much wax on it, it's not even dirty from all this driving. We're getting breakfast. Okay, so to keep things interesting, we are going to be having a challenge. This is the first of maybe more. <laughs> challenge number one, who can get the best fuel economy? We have each driven three tanks of gas each. Yeah, you, roughly two yeah, you, tanks. At least two tanks. The way we're doing yeah. it is we've been trading off. Each person drives like four hours, which is about a tank of gas in this car, and then switching drivers to the next driver. So the results are in. We've got enough data points, and the winner is... Drum roll! Kyle Leonard. <laughs> with an average speed of 95. In the middle of the night with a negative 5 Celsius temperature at... Oh, I apologize. That's wrong. At 16.1. No, the winner is at 105. Kyle Leonard again at 17.8 miles per gallon. That's negative 12. That was in Montana. <laughs> okay, so just to sum that up, that was <laughs> way more technical than anyone who wants to know cares. Drives you, faster. I drove. Sips more fuel. Yeah. So and going faster uses more gas. Who would have known? I think it was the cold in the mountains. <laughs> we're not tracking headwind, so I can't. We can't. You know, yeah, can't say that. it's the it headwind. Could, yeah, it could be the headwind. You know, <laughs> one of us just likes speed. Although we kept driving the same direction, everybody was driving <laughs> the same direction. We're going from uh, west, west to, to east. east. Uh, so I maybe the headwinds are getting funky, and they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna rotate for Kyle, go with them, and then go against BJ." The winner of the fuel but economy <laughs> competition goes to Kyle. So winner, far. The winner of the fun competition goes to me. <laughs> Everyone, well, when, when you have a ticket on the side of the road, I was like, yeah, how's that fun competition going yeah, now? We'll no? see, we'll see. So, update to the fuel game. I don't even know what we're Fuel calling. game, it's... Where are we at? Bam! Wyoming. We had really bad weather. It was warm. Like, it was like negative 10. It's like negative 8 now. Negative, negative seven. Negative seven, warming up. Yep. And I had to drive super slow because it was like slushy and like white out, blowing snore. So I was doing like 60 to 80. Down with salt. Yeah, salt sucks. But 19 miles per gallon, 19.1 miles per gallon. Hyper like miler. 19.3 miles 19.3. With a rough average of 95. Yeah, I put uh, that on 95. Kilo more. Kilometers per hour at a negative 10 temp. Winning. You are the thirsty gas guzzler now, and I am the hybrid electric s future. <laughs> As we drive our 1990 Nissan GTR, that we're like, oh my god, we got 19 miles per gallon. <laughs> Driving way below the speed limit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We made it. We're back from the trip, safe and sound. We grabbed some showers. It's the first thing we did, and. Like a true car guy, look at what Kyle's doing. He's he's washing off the salt. He's 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 washing the car in blistery snowstorm weather because can't have salt on it for any 
any length of time. <laughs> Should I grab a, a cloth and a chamois? Well, the trip was a huge success. We didn't crash the car. It didn't break down, not even once, which is just insane. The good news is we got through the border without a hiccup. The guy was just a enthusiast and he saw the car and he was just like, what, a GTR, this is amazing. He, he totally got it. Um, and helped us get the paperwork filled out really easily. So it worked out well. Uh, at one point, Kyle almost hit a deer. I do not have footage of that, um, which is probably a good thing because he was concentrating and I was sleeping. But we made it back and the car is amazing. I it just, it's been so much fun. There's a few things I want to go through. I think the tidying up the interior, there's a few things on the exterior that could use a little tidying up, all which will help it go for a little bit more money, which again, can fuel this whole crazy experiment. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is wash your car. Making it clean cars sell well. So make that paint as shiny as you can. Start with a rinse, go with the soap application, some suds, a waxing, chamois dry or wax. Get that thing polished up. If you have any deep scratches or surface stuff, even going with a uh, rubbing compound to get through some of that is the way to go. Uh, simple things you can fix. This would be the next thing that are visual things that take away from the car and can be fixed easily without a lot of expense or time. GTRs have this. This is a GTR specific thing, but the heat um, on these cars heats up the plastic and the sun, and then they start to bubble here on the dash. You know, expensive to change the whole dash. It can be done. Um, but sourcing parts for these cars and stuff. So we were talking to some GTR experts and they recommended heating up the dash with what we have here is a heat gun. So we're gonna heat up the dash, get the plastic on there nice and warm, and then using a block of wood with a routered edge um, that meets the, the bevel to sort of push it in and set it in place. And then once the plastic dries up and hardens, um, you've taken out the bubble. If you're trying to convince your wife that you should, uh, that a GTR is a family vehicle, you can get two car seats in the back of it. So it's uh, totally enough space for the kiddos. The next thing you wanna do if you're getting a car ready to sell is in this case, we're trying to restore it to as original to factory condition as you can. Our piece here, there's a factory OEM lip that's supposed to be on there that for ours was painted blue and there was the wrong one. So what we did was we actually sourced an original OEM one here. And what we did was we tracked down the original factory paint code and painted it to the original factory color. The other thing that was missing in our car was in front of the intercooler, there's supposed to be a mesh plate. So we're adding that to our car. Again, it's just those sort of details that, that people, especially car enthusiasts care about. Is it fitting in the hole? Getting it, getting in a hole, but the problem is it's, it's, I need something bigger, you know? I need some more girth. It's give, a big give, hole. Give, you don't need more length, you just, just need- give me, a, give me a shaft of more, oh, more girth. <laughs> Did you get a little in your face there? Yeah. <laughs> a little spray. just needs more girth. You know, the other life lesson of the day is Japanese dust in the eye hurts the same amount as American dust. In the, <laughs> the goal for us is to sell it online at bringatrailer.com. I think that's gonna be the best bang for our buck. So the way it works is the Bring a Trailer has a seven day auction. At the end of the seven days, as you get down to the last minute, uh, people can bid up. And if anyone bids within the last minute, uh, it adds another minute to the timer. That way no one can get in there and snipe the price and it always goes for what it should go for. But it's still super, super anxiety ridden to watch. Okay, so the last thing you wanna do when you're getting ready to sell your car is take some beautiful shots. Pick a nice spot where there's, overcast is best, but for here right now, we got sun and that's what it is. You know, set it up nice so it has a nice background, nice display, clean the car, wax it, just clean it up. Um, and this car has turned out really well. We ended up vacuuming and steam cleaning the seats and the interior came out really well. We used leather conditioner. We didn't get that on camera, but we used the leather conditioner. Um, bring back the leather and got it kind of fully detailed. Cleaned the glass inside and out. Um, replaced the bumper on it, which is looking really good. Or not replaced the bumper, but got that OEM piece. Painted it the matching original charcoal and uh, it looks really sharp. This, this car is, 
is too nice to let go of, but it is the way it works. So in total, so just to go over this really quickly, uh, price of the car in US was $17,250. In total, we spent $21,758 on importing costs, gas, flights, etc. So with the trip and everything, so we need to sell it for twenty one seven basically to to break even on this thing. Less than that, we have no reserve on the car. So less than that, you know, my wife is not gonna like that. Um, but but there's a chance for more. Um, being available in the U.S. Uh, after that twenty five year rule, the cars have just gone uh, insane, and uh, I don't I don't know where they're gonna end up, but. I remember the day when you could buy like a relatively clean GTR for like 12 grand for an R32. And now like, it's just, that's a, that's a, a pipe dream. So yeah, we'll see. All right, time to upload, fingers crossed. God, oh, look how beautiful it looks. Oh, so nice. Got a walk around video on there, tons of photos. One of the things I really like about setting up bring a trailer is they help you write the ad so i mean you submit your post and you, you fill out all the information and then actually i had a phone call with someone and they helped me you know they rewrote it and made sure it had all the like good info and um if you're missing any photos and stuff they'll direct you on like which ones to take so it was really nice and because bring a trailer is for enthusiasts like look at these other cars for sale like it's just cool unique interesting cars um you're gonna be in front of all of the right buyers so I mean, this should go well. This should go well. There's two hours left. $15,800. It's been up all week and it's only got to fifteen eight. What's We're it, so screwed. Again? Our breaking point is 21750 bucks. A nine grand loss. That's... That's an expensive vacation. My wife is going to murder me. It's at $15,800 now. And there's two hours left. Let's just see how it goes. I don't think it's going to sell. At 30 minutes left, okay, everyone's going to get their notification, okay? Oh, I didn't realize that, that it, it uh, sent out that notification, but that makes sense. 21K. We just hit our uh, redeem point. Dude, I can lose $750 for an epic trip. That's totally... <laughs> oh, man, I'm so pumped right now. Okay, now this is about how much money we're yes. going to break. Yes. Moment. We're in the clear. Oh, money I'm going to stay married. <laughs> money, money, money. <laughs> money. Okay, 15 minutes left. We're still at 21K. Yeah, I think it's it's stalled out. 30 seconds left, 2250. Okay, it looks like the time keeps going at the end. Yeah, yeah. Like every time. So if it's down into the last like two minutes and there's a bid, it, it adds a little bit more time. So there's no okay. sniping. We're at 23,750. This is good. Good news. Six miles all around. 24,250. What? Oh. Dude, and it's, it's, it's still going. 24,500. 25,000. 25,750. 26K. Oh, okay. man. 26,250. Sold. Sold. What? That's Are you kidding me? That's good stuff. You got paid $6,000 to own a GTR for six months to drive it across the country on some of the most beautiful roads in the world. Drift it in the mountains on some sketchy, sketchy roads. Oh, that was a fun trip. <laughs> oh, my God. That's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. So, uh, what are we doing? When are we doing the next one? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe stray from Japan. Ooh, I like that. Cut the middle man out right to the source. I've always wanted to go back to Tokyo. Next GTR, drifting in Tokyo. <laughs> Akita Mountain. What if we got an AE86 straight from Japan? That's a car we could probably pick up at a fair price in Japan. If you are looking to buy or sell a car on bringatrailer.com, use Brandon or Octane Monkey. I think it's Brandon at Octane Monkey is the email address. And uh, they will send me $20 or maybe $200, which will help pay for more of these adventures. So, would you do it? 
If you had the opportunity to buy a Nissan GTR and take an epic friend on an epic journey driving some of the most beautiful roads in the world, would you do it? So we did it. We got to own a GTR. We made a little bit of money. In a way, it was just taking advantage of all of that useless car info knowledge that we have kicking around in our brains. I think we often think that people are lucky that certain people have all of the skills or they have all the things they need um, and that could never work out for us. But I'm just a regular guy. I like GTRs and I have been following the prices of them for at least a decade. A normal person and I saw an opportunity and I was able to put together the idea to do it. I think the idea is the biggest part. If you can think it, if you can dream it, then making it happen is not as crazy as, as you might think. You gotta try, you gotta do your dreams. It's not recording any sound at all. I don't think it's recording. Anyway, I'm gonna go double check that. You are recording, I got audio, so that's good. Guys, thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. We just set up a Patreon account. 10 years ago, the dream was to buy a BMW and start drifting. That was a lot for me uh, 10 years ago, but uh, with some work and some effort and some saving, we're here. And this is uh, a work in progress, still not done, but the steps are being made. Uh, investing in the shop, investing in the cars, investing in the show. And it's because of people like you who have been watching us and following along that has encouraged me to keep going with it. So uh, in part of that, I have made a decision to start a Patreon account. All the proceeds are gonna go towards the shop and the cars and making more content. The tiers range from buying a beer and general support to buying some sponsorship, having a sticker on this car. We're gonna put some on the side, the windows, spots for big stickers, medium stickers, all the sizes. I'm gonna keep making content regardless, but I wanted to create a way for fans to sort of get connected more and uh, make a difference on on what the show is about and where it goes so if you guys want to check that out uh patreon slash octane monkey there's a link in below and if i can figure it out we'll get a link up here in the youtube clip um, we also have the the other stuff the octane monkey website you can buy gear support the show that way thank you guys so much for all of your support and uh, i look forward to seeing you in the next one